y'all. Thanks for stopping by the Obviously Lee Authentic channel. My name's Leah. That's spelled L-E-A and not L-E-A-H. And you are tapped into the second installment of Oh, Have Y'all Seen? And this will be a recap discussion about part two of Evil Genius. So y'all, I took a lot of notes because this part two was a lot. We got introduced to several different characters and it like i like the way the um i like the way the documentary is like feeding in and out information and connecting it all in connecting it at the end of each part so in this part two we get introduced to bill rothstein he's this 59 year old man and he was the one at the end of part one that had basically said that mary joe armstrong had a dead body in her house in her freeze wrapped up in her freezer and was just like y'all need to go get her she's dangerous i'm scared of her and he kept saying like you know she's manipulative she's manic depressive that's her ex-boyfriend in the freezer she want me to go buy a wood chipper to help her get rid of the body she's just doing a lot and i was and <clears throat> the police, and that's the one thing I noticed, the police kept asking him certain questions and he kept making sure not to implicate himself in it until he had to implicate himself. So I'm like, I see you, Bill. I see you, Mr. Rothstein. So we end up finding out that one of the officers, Officer Morgan, actually kind of knows Bill Rothstein because his, Bill Rothstein was, a best, was the best man in his in-law's wedding so he kind of had a rapport with him and he even said bill is a person that thinks he's smarter than everybody in the room but all in all he's pretty much like a gentle person so he didn't really think that bill had the guts or the gall to kill somebody but bill said y'all need to go to the peach street like the this um address and you'll find the body there so they actually end up going to the house this is actually where mary joe lives with bill which he kept not, he, he didn't say that he lived with her in the beginning. So like I said, he was trying to make sure he didn't implicate himself. But eventually he had to let on. And even Mary Jo, as she was getting arrested, was like, he my roommate, y'all. So, so we continue and um, they go into the house. What we end up finding out is that she's a hoarder. And like the house is filthy because she has cats. They end up having to take out two poor cats that died in the house. And then the house is full with feces. And I know that house had to smell disgusting because cat urine and poop is just nasty. Like the ammonia smell, a, a massive amount of ammonia hurts. Like it burns your nose and it burns your eyes. That's why pregnant women are not supposed to be around it because you can get toxic plasmosis from it. So I'm just like, girl, what, your house was, they just, and they showed pictures, her house was nasty. But one of the guys, um, one of the newsmen basically said she didn't believe in banks. So she just had a whole bunch of money laying around. And she had a nasty attitude when the police was there, which I was like, girl, how do you have a nasty attitude? And... They just found a dead body in your basement. Like, if it, like, you have a dead body in your basement, why are you being nasty to the police when you have a dead body in your basement, ma'am? So she got arrested. She was pissed that she got arrested. She was talking about, um, they showed videos of her, like, talking about she was going to sue the department and she was coming for bill and she kept saying bill was a filthy liar and he was just looking for his 15 minutes of fame like i never killed anybody he killed him blah 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 so we end up finding out that the unfortunately the person that was um the body was a man named james roden and that turned out to be mary joe's boyfriend that she had for 10 years well as the story continues, we end up finding out Bill Rothstein's connection to Miss Mary Jo Armstrong. And basically, 
They have known each other since the 60s and the 70s for the past 35 years and had an on again, off again relationship. They even got engaged at one time, but then she broke it off because she was just tired of him. And she said he was like perverted in the bedroom when it came to like sexual. So acts. I'm watching this back but what and she I'm was saying didn't this really film, and I just realized out of, out that I kept norm. calling her Mary Jo um, throughout this whole entire really thing. Her and legs, her name is so Marjorie Armstrong. He would like to have sex so with please legs, forgive me, y'all. Like, That's weird, but there are people that got like feet fetishes. So I guess there's leg fetishes too. So basically. As the story progresses, we end up finding out, like, so much more about them. And it made me realize, like, why they were on again, off again. Because we end up meeting one of Bill Rothstein's um, best friends. And he basically was like, he didn't understand his connection to Mary Jo. Like, he said he didn't really speak about her that much. But when he met her, the actual friend met her after he got out of service. He was like, he didn't like her. And he told Bill, like, she's nasty. And that was that seems to be like pretty much the consistence consensus about Mary Jo that like she's very hot tempered and she can be very nasty and she spews venom when she is ha going through one of her episodes. So as the story continues, they decide to in, um, interrogate Bill Rothstein's a basically he snitches on Mary Jo. He basically says that. Um, she called him up one night. It was a stormy, dark, stormy night. And she didn't say she killed um, James, but she kept saying, like, things just happen tonight. So she basically just kept saying, like, it just happened instead of just saying, like, yo, I shot him in the back of the head or I just shot him. And so she, at this point, Mary Jo is saying that Bill killed um james because bill wanted to get back together with her but she didn't want to be with um bill she wanted to be with james so the police end up like the fbi is the one that interrogates him but they have the fbi and the police interrogate him but the fbi agent actually asks him like is this connected to the brian wells case and he was like no no and i i feel like they knew the FBI agent knew something was up because when they first decided to like start the interview, the first thing Brian Bill Rothstein said was, I'm gonna let you know something. I'm the smartest person in this room. And it's just him and the FBI agent. So I'm basically so he's basically trying to let on that like, dude, I can outsmart you. But I also that lends to his arrogance, but it also which lends to what people have been saying about him that he wasn't a finisher but he was highly intelligent i think the reason why mary joe and bill were so like inseparable in a sense with this on again off again relationship was because they seem to be virtually the same person just with different issues because you have two people who seem who everyone feels is like very intelligent very smart very articulate but mary joe can finish things you end up finding out by the end of this episode that she has five degrees and i think they said she has several masters so she obviously know how knows how to increase her education and she's a smart lady because she graduated but then you and she was in the orchestra and it takes a lot to you know play wind instruments and then you have him mr bill who they said he was smart, but he never finished anything. They said he didn't finish his pilot license. He was a college dropout. Like, but he was really intelligent and charming. And I think they might have also bonded with their upbringings because it seems that both of them were bullied when they were younger. Bill's family had a lot of wealth. They owned a bottle company in the area. So a lot of the kids didn't like them and picked on them because they were the rich kids of the neighborhood. And he was kind of funny, like he was awkward, just like how Mary Jo was. She was awkward. And it wasn't until her dad built that dollhouse that she got friends. The only difference I see is that Bill was able to create relationships and like meaningful relationships because he was charming whereas mary joe people really didn't like being around her because she could be nasty she could be cool one minute and then be nasty but virtually they seem to be the same person so 
we continue. And this is when I was like, I had to write down white privilege is because Bill Rothstein admits to helping Mary Jo move the body. He even admits to buying a meat grinder and a wood chipper because they were going to dismember, dismember James's body so they could get rid of all the evidence. And, and but he was allowed to be out on bail and free basically because he was cooperating with the police and showing them everything. But I feel like he still should have been in jail. Like he should have not been able to go home because you still tampered with a corpse. You knew that person was dead for three weeks before you told anybody and you helped up clean up the crime scene. So as we find out, like and what Mary Jo said about Bill was true, that he was living for this 15 minutes of fame. And I think that's really what he was living for because... You could see it in like the videos that they showcased of him when he was demonstrating to the police like this is where the body was. I helped her do this. I helped he he had like um an air about himself, like a jovial air about him. Like he was getting the recognition he felt like he deserved because they go back to the house, the Peach Street house. And that's the other thing. The Peach Street house was at the entrance to the road that led all the way back to the tower where Brandon, uh, I keep going to call this man Brandon, where Brian Wells was instructed to deliver his pizza and where he got attacked and they put the bomb around his neck. But there were like people in the police department that didn't believe it. And it was like the higher ups felt like this case and the James case didn't have any, um, the robbery and the bomb case didn't have anything to do with the body in the freezer. But I'm like, it's too much of a coincidence. And... Like, Bill Rothstein kept, like, implicating himself, but I guess people were so taken back by his charm that they just didn't, they didn't, did, like, dig deeper because they even found a suicide note that he wrote. And in the suicide note, the first thing he wrote was, like, this has nothing to do with the, uh, with the Brian's Wells case. And when they asked him about it, he was like, you know, I just didn't want y'all to go on a wild goose chase. If I'm a detective or a, a part of the FBI, I would you would be my prime suspect because I don't know anybody who writes a, a suicide letter and tries to unimplicate themselves in a murder. But they cleared him because he passed a lie detector test. And I was like, I was with the FBI agent who was like, I didn't, the lie detector test didn't mean anything because I knew he was smart enough to to like pass it and i'm like thank you like honestly lie detector tests aren't that um they're not that like concrete that's why certain like people don't use them when they do cases is because all you have to do is control your breathing and your heart rate because it's basically it's basically marking like when you lie there's certain things in your body certain things happen in your body when you lie so that's that's what's happening. So if you know how to how to calm your breathing down through like meditation or like you're just not a person that gets anxious or anything like that, then you could pass a lie detector test. And he basically did. He, he they even say he kind of like fell asleep during the lie detector test, which I also was like that's arrogance as well. It's like I'm proving to y'all like I'm gonna pass this lie detector test. Like this this ain't nothing to me. So I'm going to go to sleep. So I was like, see, I, I'm already not feeling you. So then we continue. And what happened, Mary Jo is in jail now. She's like in prison waiting for her trial day while Bill Rothstein is out here free and telling the police everything. So the documentary kind of like switches over the part two kind of like takes a break from Bill and then they jump into Mary Jo. And like I said, we end up meeting her um, friend who she's been best friends with for 50 years. And her best friend even says like she's intense. Like the lady even made mention that like when they would hang out after she hung out with her, she just had to like, like take a breath like she was doing workouts because Mary Jo was that intense and she even said she was beautiful and she even knew about the hoarding. They had like three other people other than her best friends that spoke about the uh, about her. One lady even made mention that Mary Jo would 
Like if she saw something on the side of the road, no matter how much money Mary Jo had, she still felt the need to hoard and collect things. She even had a car seat and Mary Jo has never had kids and none of her friends had kids. So it was like, what was the purpose of you hoarding this wealth? So the story continues and then they start to investigate this guy named, I think his name was like Kenneth Burns. And let me make sure I get these names like God, God. I wrote it down. Yeah, Kenneth Burns and his girlfriends get it gets investigated, or basically they go down and they get questioned about James Roden's death because they end up you end up finding out that they were friends with Mary Jo for nine years. Like they would go fishing with her. Well, they really loved James Roden, or as they kept calling him in the uh, part two, which his name was Jimmy or his nickname to them was Jimmy and they said they really loved Jimmy and they didn't understand why he was with uh Miss Rothstein not Miss Rothstein but with uh Mary Jo Armstrong because she was so nasty to him but uh, later on as the conversation progressed you end up finding out they just had like a very contentious relationship and it also had to do with like her being a manic depressive and I guess she wasn't on any meds because they said like her emotions would switch so quickly and she would be like calm cool and collected and then you did something to piss her off she'd be just nasty to you and the Kenneth Barnes said like they would argue like cats and dogs he even said James pushed her into a um, stove but then the next minute they would be all over each other but they also said she threatened to kill him like all the time I guess they just never thought she would like act upon it so through this, like, through this whole part, we start seeing how erratic Mary Jo is because they're feeding in and out in the in the documentary, like, her phone calls from prison. And she was just up and down. Like, one minute she started crying and then it cut, like, her crying stopped so quickly. And I was like, oh, she, she going through a lot. She is going through a lot. And I was like she needs her meds regulated because it just seems like it's just a lot so they continue and we keep continuing and then after that they flip back to bill rothstein and this i made note of this because i wrote this down and this is when i realized like something's wrong with bill is when the police officer was like oh you've been living at the peach street house for 55 years and he was like, you grew up here. And he was like, no, I lived here. I just never grew up. And I was like, no man that's 59 should be saying that. Like, we don't do Peter Pan syndrome on this channel. Like, you have to grow up. Which makes me believe that, like, he was not that intelligent. I really think that, like, like one of the officers said, he felt like he could outsmart everybody. But... Like, you're eventually going to get caught. Like, it's too many people. It seems like it's too many people involved in this plotation of of this robbery. And, like, the pieces were starting to, like, come together. Because as we continue, like, as a story, like, as the um, part two continues, you end up finding out that, like, Bill Rothstein and his brother and sister did not get along like the brother and sister had issues with bill because bill was like over the family estate after their parents passed away but he squandered all of their money and he lied to his brother and sister because the brother and sister wanted to put the peach street house up for sale and he lied and told them that he put it up for ninety thousand dollars but then later on the police went and questioned the realtor and the realtor said no he actually wanted to put the house up for $250,000. So basically the exact amount that they had Brian Wells rob from uh, on the little like the actual note that was written down that he was supposed to get from the PNC bank. That is the exact amount that branded that Bill Rothstein wanted for the Peach Street house. So I was like, that's the connection right there. The house is on the same road, like at the same road entrance of where the tower was, where they had Brian Wells go and um, deliver the pizza. And then he wakes up with a bomb strapped to his neck. And then you got 
Bill over here talking about he trying to sell his house, lying to his brother and sister for ninety thousand dollars, but in reality he wants two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So I was like, something the dots, Brian, Bill, we know you was a part of this. Stop acting like you wasn't a part of it. So the story progresses, and excuse me, Mary Jo and Bill Rothstein basically stand trial. She gets sentenced. He gets sentenced, but he doesn't get a lot of time because he complied with the police and they basically just gave him a few misdemeanor job, um, charges for and he only spent a few years in the um, in the slammer when I feel like he should have been there longer. But that's just my opinion, because I like I granted I haven't seen part three, so I don't know how much he was in this um, plotation. I keep saying flotation in the plot of Brian Wells and the bomb and them robbing a bank. But I have begged to feel like he's been, I, he was in there. He, his hands was all up in through this, but I don't know yet. So we got to continue for the next um, episode of, Oh, have y'all seen part three? So we continue. And unfortunately, Mr. Um, Rochester ends up have, having um, cancer he has cancer of the thorax and he dies in 2004. But Mary Jo then ends up actually confessing that she did kill James um, Roden. And it was because they were having an uh, issue with him seeing other women or she thought he was cheating on him. But she's still trying to say she was not connected to the Brian Wells um murder with the bank robbery but she kept saying that bill knew everything about it and he should be charged for it but no one really took her serious so the part two is winding down and then we get to meet an actual inmate that was cool with her that um the lady seems like she seems to be doing well she seems to be out and the lady basically said that she met mary joe and like most people kind of didn't feel her, feel her like that. But she said, Mary, like, Mary Jo didn't like the person she was talking to. And she said, man, I wish I could bash her head open, like, bash her head like a watermelon and watch the seeds pop out. And the inmate or the ex-convict was like, she was like, that was weird to me and very uncomfortable because she was just like, I know she was in, um... She was in, like, you know, she's in here for murder. So why would you say something like that? So the story continues and we end up finding out, and I didn't make mention of this, but Mary Jo has already killed somebody and got off on it. She actually killed her boyfriend in 1984 and she shot him six times while he was asleep, but she got off for domestic violence. But it seems through with the interrogation with Ken Barnes, that he said Mary Jo would laugh all the time talking about I shot him and I got away with it and they asked like why'd you get how'd you get away with it and she was like because I like said domestic violence so the convict the ex-convict who's talking now she was like she killed two people and they weren't even trying to like you they even said she even said it. she was like Mary Jo has killed two people definitively definitively and She's only supposed to get a few, like, seven years in jail, but going to get out on good behavior because she said she was having a mental breakdown. And she was like, that just isn't right. And then we end up finding out that Mary Jo is, like, playing the part of, like, she's crazy or, like, mentally unstable so she can get moved to a psych ward. Because, like the convict said, Mary Jo was like, the food is better at the psych ward. So she would basically stand in the mirror and, like, shave her eyebrows for hours. And like the lady said, it don't take that long to shave your eyebrows. It's just one swipe and go. And they were like, no, Mary Jo would sit there and shave it one by one. Like, she would act crazy on purpose so the guards would, like, make note of it. So when it came time... For her to go up for like her trial or for her to be paroled to a different area that she would have proof that she was acting crazy and i was like see she calculated she calculated so that's the end i can't wait for y'all to come back for part three i'm excited for part three i want to know like 
how much that how much was Bill Rothstein in the mix of all of this? Like Mary Jo, we like next. I think I'm really excited because next um part three, they're actually gonna speak to her. Like she's gonna be on camera in her like jailhouse attire, talking about her experience. So we might get some good good information. So. Our new saying at the end of every segment will be, be bravely authentic. Because there's no point for you to be anybody else. And that's just facts on facts. Just be you. And thanks for stopping by.